Hi, I'm Amelia Bordeaux from Market Compass. I just thought we'd take a look at the market today and what went on and kind of a preview of tomorrow. So I just put up the cover of the, the Wall Street Journal online and it explains very well just at a real quick glance what's going on. Um, after market hours, Facebook um, had a giant uh, revenue growth. Earlier today, before the market opened, um, Boeing posted a full year loss um, due to the 737 MAX setbacks. And so then the news was quite negative on Boeing. And I actually thought um, that would impact negatively the Dow Jones. Um, and that wasn't the case. What the market instead focused on, on um, the earnings call for Boeing, was that they were doing a lot to try to rectify the situation and move the company forward through this. So kind of strong new leadership direction in the company, the market took as a plus. And I'm not sure if that's the correct takeaway. <laughs> I'm sure there's more bad newing, bad Boeing news, excuse me, coming up. And so um, the market can be a bit fickle. And I think this is one of those instances where the market kind of picks and chooses what it likes. But overall, um, the earnings reports in the U.S. are kind of overshadowing now the coronavirus cases that are, are growing. So you see that's the other headline here. Um, coronavirus cases grow. Airlines suspend flights to China. You can always go on my Market Compass uh, Instagram account at Market Compass to kind of look for intraday updates on news and what's going on. But um, we'll take a look at the market in a minute. But certainly, obviously, the outbreak of the coronavirus had weight on the market and now today and yesterday the market's kind of come back because um, there's been massive efforts to try to certainly contain the spread of the coronavirus so once again the market is a bit fickle and how it chooses to interpret things sometimes and this is one of those one of those times this is boeing stock um, just intraday the past three days this is today so yesterday prior to um, the earnings report coming out it was pretty negative and then it rose throughout the day here was the high and then came off a bit but still up for the day um because as i said people are looking kind of at the stronger leadership or what they're doing to guide out of this um, 737 max crisis as opposed to the bad news in the report which there was plenty um let's take a look at the dollar index so I had talked about this on my most recent webinar, but um, here is the U.S. dollar index. When it's going up, the dollar is getting stronger. When it's going lower, the dollar is getting weaker. And you see these two boxes. It had since the trade deal with China was announced back in October, the phase one trade deal. Um, it had shifted lower and then once again um, towards the end of the year into a subsequent lower range, the U.S. dollar. And with the spread kind of a coronavirus over the last three days, that news coming um, forward in the headlines, certainly um, the dollar has strengthened because the dollar is a safe haven currency. And when there's a risk off, something risk off in the market, the dollar strengthened. So it's strengthened out of the latest trading range. You see the break here, that 97.75. We broke 98, the figure. And it really is a matter of what the market chooses to focus on. We talk a lot about in my monthly webinar, the macro themes and when they assert themselves to the front, um, that's what the market focuses on and that's what the market moves. It's either becomes risk seeking or flips to risk off right away. And we did talk about how the coronavirus was a risk sitting in the background that could come to the forefront even more and assert itself. And that is what we saw late last week and on Monday. Um, it flipped to a real risk off move in the market because of the spread of the virus. And then um, US earnings reports started to become more positive and the market just shifted its focus back to the earnings reports, back to the positivity, um, back to the US Federal Reserve Board meeting today, which the statement was the rates were unchanged, at least the policy rate. Um, and the wording was relatively unchanged in the press conference. Federal Reserve Chairman Powell did speak about a little bit about the risks of um, coronavirus and did mention that inflation was still under the 2% target, which you could interpret as, you know, slightly dovish, but not a lot of change um, from the Federal Reserve today. So let's just take a look at the VIX index because I wanted to show you that risk off, risk on switch that we had over the past, say, three to four days 
in the market. This is a VIX index, and as I like to always say, 18 starts to get pretty risk off, and 20 is like more, like more majorly risk off in the market when the VIX hits 20. So with the spread of the coronavirus, um, you did we did break 18 top side on the VIX index. We had talked a little bit and discussed on the monthly webinar, um, is the market too complacent? At the time of the webinar, you know, equities were running up still making new highs. And we talked about, we mentioned, given the risks out there, given these macro themes, is the market just too complacent right now? And certainly after, right after, a couple days after the webinar, that coronavirus, the headlines really indicated that coronavirus is spreading. It was a larger problem than say initially thought. And so we did have the VIX spike and it did break 18. Um, here, that kind of risk off. And certainly we did have equities come off over those days while the VIX was spiking. Now the VIX has come back. As I said, it's more the market's focused on good U.S. earnings reports. Um, seemingly and surprisingly not that concerned about uh, Boeing being having negative revenue, which wasn't good, um, but more focused on taking the positive out of it. So uh, maybe we were a little bit too corrective on coronavirus, but it's still, meaning the equity market, it's still a risk. Um, we've come back to about 16 spot 39 on the VIX index. So we're not down to where we were. We had been at around like, you know, just above 12, we're still at 16, but certainly much lower than that 18 um, where equities really had been falling the past couple of days. Uh, here's US dollar yen. So. These are levels that I kind of went over on the, the webinar. Um, they've come right back up. You know, around the webinar, we were sitting up here, um, 110, just sub 110. And when we talked, I said, you know, I said, there are risks. The market's a bit complacent here. And so we should look at both the downside and the top side levels in, on yen. And I tend to be a seller of yen on the top side because of all the risks out there. And sure enough, yen did move down. Um, at one point we broke 109, the figure downside, and we're trading just slightly above 109. But you do see, you know, the other levels, support levels yen could go to, should we have another big risk off move. So that's always one dollar yen you want to keep your eye on. As I mentioned, there are other market risks coming up, and one is tomorrow morning, and that's the Bank of England. And pound's been heavy today. Here we're looking at pound sterling, so when the line is uh, moving up, the pound is getting stronger against the US dollar. When it's moving lower, the dollar is getting stronger against the pound. So we're sitting right on major support for the pound, 130 the figure, just right above 130 the figure. And we have the Bank of England meeting tomorrow. It's Mark Carney's last meeting as the governor of the Bank of England. It's about 50-50 whether they're going to cut rates and the volatility overnight vol of pound has been moving up. So this is probably the most uncertain rate meeting for the Bank of England in the past three years. Let's see if Mark Carney wants to cut rates and leave things in good hands for the next Bank of England governor who's um, coming up, Andrew Bailey. Uh, it's about 45% chance of a rate cut tomorrow and that's down from 70, but still, um, that doesn't kind of factor in coronavirus um, and, and everything like that. So we need to see what they'll do tomorrow morning. And if they do cut rates, I do see the pound um, breaking that 130 downside. Um, that's definitely something you want to look for. If, if they don't, we could hold steady, maybe not rally too much above the most, I want to say that's the recent high, but I mean, the most immediate highs, they <laughs> not back here, um, here, which is this 131, say, you know, 40, 50 level. That's just because the day after the Bank of England on Friday, we have Brexit coming up. And, you know, Boris Johnson's been all over his Instagram and Twitter accounts today saying two days and we leave the EU. And um, that's true. But we don't know on the day, headlines really matter in an event like this, because as we discussed, day-to-day um, -day lives in the UK aren't going to change on Friday when they leave the EU, but they will change um, eventually and there'll be subsequent um, headlines and risk-off moves um, discussed around trade talks between EU and the UK throughout the remainder of the year. So significant risk for the pound. But um, 
there could be celebratory headlines in the news, um, British press, uh, EU press on that day, um, or you know, financial market news could turn negative headlines. It's really hard to know. Um, and so the first thing we have to get through, though, is certainly the Bank of England. We have this 130 level um, if they cut rates, which would be uh, a big deal. So let's see if they do. Let's see if the statement um, is focused on the risks uh, or not, how heavily the focus um, is on the risks in the Bank of England statement. And then on Friday, we're just going to watch the headlines. Um, when they leave the EU and see, are these headlines coming across really positive? Are they coming across wishy-washy towards the negative side? Um, if Pound rallies on, say, positive headlines, um, Brexit on Friday, you know, it's on the weekend, right? So we're heading into the weekend. So if you, you want to kind of take that position off, certainly before the weekend, because it's not going to be too much longer, um, I'd imagine, before negative headlines on the EU-UK um, trade talks start uh, to come back in. So we have a big day coming up tomorrow at the Bank of England. I'm actually pretty excited to see what they do. I will be talking to you again after Bank of England and Brexit.